Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, Saturn will be retrograde for approximately 139 days from 30th of this month, which is June 2024, up till 15th of November, one day after Children's Day in India. <laughs> So this transit is, as usual, for every retrograde transit, a very long transit, almost, yeah, 40%, 50% of the year almost. So this transit will be the last transit of Saturn, which is retrograde in the sign of Aquarius. As you know, next year, Saturn will be moving into the sign of Pisces, all right? We'll discuss that later, but today we will discuss what this will do for every ascendant, but before that, we will discuss 10 points that we should take care in general for this retrograde so that we can best use this. And then we will go specifically for every ascendant. All right. So if you're new, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video if you enjoy this and share it with somebody who you think should be aware of all this after listening. And if you want a personalized consultation from me, then please go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. You will find him when Saturn goes retrograde. <laughs> all right. So what is the first thing that we need to do? It's called re-evaluation. Retrograde. R is for retrograde. R is for re-evaluation. Re, re, re. <laughs> so we need to re-evaluate our goals. You know? So many people can find themselves reevaluating their long term goals you know short term or even mid term goals so they could reevaluate their aspirations you know their um, objectives and what is their ultimate aim so saturn as you know is the karak for the 10th house very important planet and he is also lording aquarius which is the original 11th sign and where he is and he also lords the 10th house which is capricorn which is again the house of karma so how do you see yourself in the next five to ten years? So this is something which you might reevaluate. All right. Then you might reflect a bit on your social circles because Aquarius is the house of social circles. So <clears throat> when Saturn is retrograde in Aquarius, you might start to think, you know, what kind of social circle do you have? You know, is the social circle benefiting you or is it, you know, giving bad habits to you, you know, like smoking, drinking and all this. So then you might want to cut down your social circle or make new friends. All right. <laughs> now, number three, very important, very, very, very important career reassessment. OK, so there could be some delays, shifts or, you know, changes in your professional life. And of course, uh, you might be concerned about you know your promotions or your paycheck or your overall net worth in general because saturn is the original 10th lord of your profession right and then there could be some technological uh changes also uh this is point number four why technology because aquarius also rules technology so what happens when technology comes it spreads to people at large right so anything that spreads to people at large and don't forget Aquarius is also co-ruled by Rahu. Rahu is the planet of technology. So there could be new innovations or, you know, there could be some lawsuits. You could see, you know, big companies fighting with each other could be the case. So, <clears throat> so or, you know, some revolutionary AI thing could come up, you know, more and more, you know. So maybe this GPT-5 will come or maybe it's already here. Um, so which is, you know, much, much more powerful than GPT-4 and GPT-4 O especially, right? The number five, this is... Typical Saturn, authority issues. <laughs> so this means you might run into some, you know, tuss with your authority, you know, your boss or your father or your mother sometimes or with anybody, you know, um, whoever is in that position, you may not like what they say. So they may become more demanding. Okay, so this is something which might happen at times. Okay. So because of this, you know, you may uh, you may start to think if they are, you know, exploiting you or you are, are you getting paid well enough, all right? So number six, this is gold. <laughs> there could be delays in your projects. Now, uh, this, is, this is very critical because for this, you have to go for every ascendant because without this, you will not understand. So for example, if... Saturn is your seventh lord, so it could create delay in getting married, okay? But nonetheless, for this, stay tuned for the ascendant wise, and then there you will get more idea. Number seven, there could be some financial adjustment. So 
you might shuffle your stock portfolio or you might put money from stock to real estate or you might sell your real estate and invest in the stock market. So there could be some adjustments because uh, you might feel that you are lacking, you know, disciplined investing. Okay, okay. so of course, I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own due diligence before you invest. But if you feel you lack um, discipline investing, then please start doing some SIP, you know, in some mutual fund or in some stock. I'm sure you will be able to do it. Uh, it may be a very small amount, but that disciplined uh, investing, that habit should be there. All right. Now, number eight, this is something which I don't want to speak, nor you want to hear, but it's the time for personal accountability and personal responsibility. So now is the time where you might feel everything is because of you. Okay, You are the culprit. <laughs> so you might blame yourself sometimes or somebody else may blame you. So it's like a double-edged sword. He's blaming you, you blame him, right? <laughs> Nonetheless, this is a time where you will realize that you have to take responsibility for your own life. You cannot blame others, okay? And if somebody is blaming you for your problems, maybe you have to be respectful and you have to convey that, well, my dear sir, my dear madam, it's you, not me, all right? Provided you make the facts clear. And number nine, very important, this is a time for emotional introspection because now, uh, when Saturn <clears throat> goes retrograde, what happens is things can appear to be more than they than what they are. Okay, so what does this mean? This means you might you, you might feel you know like people are not reciprocating you with you, for example. So they are not giving you back. You know, you are only the one who is in the giving, and you are not receiving anything. <clears throat> Or you might, or somebody else might accuse you of not giving you anything and only receiving, all right? So emotionally, you have to introspect, see your friends and, you know, your family members, you know, so that dynamics has to be there. And last but not the least, number 10, Saturn is the Karaka for diseases, right? He's the Karaka for 6th, 8th and 12th houses. So therefore, <clears throat> don't forget to keep a check on your health and your wealth, health is wealth right but especially your health because um, you might feel that uh, certain requirements could be there uh, in terms of your health so for example if saturn is your uh, fifth lord you know there could be some issue with your heart you know for example you know fourth house you know some issue with your lungs you know? so therefore uh, go to the every uh, go to each and every ascendant and whichever house saturn rules you might face some issue related to that organ all right so if you and if you are not aware of what does every house represent for every or, organ then please go to my astrology basics playlist and you will find things there all right so now we will go to every ascendant so first always aries ascendant so for aries saturn rules your 10th house and your 11th house and he is retrograde in your 11th house right very 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 important transit because Saturn rules all the name fame for you Aries. Because all the name fame of the world is in three houses. The first, tenth and the eleventh. So among that Saturn rules the first, uh, the, the two houses. All right. So Mars and Saturn are most important players for you. When it comes to your profession especially. All right. So now you might have opportunities in your profession you know advancements could come uh it could come from unexpected sources you know some old person may you know uh, call you you know your old manager your ex-manager or some somebody like that and uh, some old projects may regain momentum so if some some project is there which is you know not getting completed then now is the time that it will get completed all right now in terms of potential losses uh, you could have some issues with your friendships, your social circles, and uh, there could be misunderstandings. Okay, so try to avoid that. And there could be gains uh, where you reevaluate your long-term goals, and that can lead to you know better strategy and solid planning. So Saturn is the karaka for planning and organization. So you need to understand that if you want to have better wealth, you have to plan your time. You have to deliver value. All right, so. For you, the most important thing is to understand how can you become more valuable? What, what, what kind of value can you add to lives of other people? Then 
in case of turmoil, there could be some issues with your, you know, team members, all right? So, um, as I said, you know, some, some issues with your colleagues and all this, you know. So, avoid miscommunication also in your social circles, okay? This is also important. And it is recommended that, that you now focus on wealth building and also your uh, communication skills and also your networking. So, if you network well, then you might find good opportunities, all right? So try to complete your professional work, whatever is remaining, and then go and network more. First, deliver value to others, and then you can network with others. All right. Thank you. All the best, Aries. Now we go to Taurus. So for Taurus, Saturn is a very special planet. Guess what? Why? <laughs> yes, I know you know the answer because he's the Yogkaraka, right? Yogkaraka means he's your ninth lord and your tenth lord, right? So therefore, he lords your ninth house, which is the house of, you know, dharma, law, guru, god, and all religion, spirituality, and tenth house is the house of name, fame, power, position, authority, and he's retrograde in your tenth house, right? So he might give you, you know, opportunities for reflecting your career goals, you know, and uh, new paths for career might open up, okay? And uh, you might complete old career projects, which you are, which you kind of ignored, or you might start something new, but most likely the probability is you will complete things which are somewhat lurking behind, all right? <clears throat> then there could be potential losses, which means uh, there could be conflicts with your uh, authorities, you know, there could be delays or there could be some setbacks in your, uh, you know, uh, professional area. So this is something you need to be aware of. And whenever this happens, uh, you might uh, be a bit frustrated, but, do, but understand that when this is happening, you should try to seek guidance from your gurus and your mentors and you will do good because the Saturn is also the ninth lot. And in terms of positives, there could be gains by uh, strengthening your you know, professional reputation. So during this period, Taurus Ascendance, you might become very much conscious about your uh, image, you know, in your workplace. Okay. So if you are an employee you you will think you will think very much okay what are call, my colleagues thinking about me if you are a business owner then you will think you know well, what are my what are my clients thinking about me or what are my competitors doing right so the the best thing for you is to now focus on your career but also understand that you might need some higher learning so because of the ninth house so therefore for you you should try to gain experience through your work but also through some advice from your mentor so within your work if there is anybody who is senior to you who is better than you in your job then please take uh, help you know keep aside your ego and uh, go and ask for help directly all right so focus on your job and in uh, advancing your knowledge all right so i am sure you will do very good taurus all the best so now we go to Gemini Ascendance. So for Gemini, what's going on? Saturn rules your 8th house. He rules your ninth house, right? And he's retrograde in your ninth house. So for you, Saturn rules the area of learning and research, okay? So there could be uh, a situation where, you know, you are taking a trip to some different country for you know, educational purposes, you know, for research, you know, your master's or PhD, and you could go very much deep into, you know, your religious or philosophical insights. You know, you, you might want to take up some spiritual path very seriously, okay? And in terms of potential losses, you know, there could be delays in travels, you know, so anticipate problems in your travel if you have some long distance travel. <clears throat> or there could be some issues with your legal matters, you know. So make sure you read the document carefully before signing. <laughs> All right. And in terms of gains, you know, there could be uh, there could be better clarity uh, after hard work in terms of your long-term vision and your philosophies and your outlook towards life. Okay, this is very important, ninth house. So for you, best thing to do is to, you know, redefine your thought process. Try to see your subconscious mind, what is going on, and then plan meticulously for, you know, your future events. So gain knowledge, understand knowledge, and then you will know what you should do in life. All right. All the best, Gemini. Now we go to Cancer. Cancer, very important planet, Saturn. Seventh Lord of marriage, eighth Lord of... Eighth Lord. 
<laughs> eighth house has so many meanings, right? It is defamation, scandal, eighth house is the graveyard, eighth house is in-laws, it's unearned money, right? You name it and it's there. And this retrograde is in your eighth house, right? So it can bring a lot of opportunities for deepening your uh, married life, you know, your intimate relationships, not just with your spouse, but, you know, with your parents, children and in-laws and everybody. And you could maybe, you know, revisit uh, all your areas where there is some shared uh, advance, shared ventures. So, for example, you know, if you are into some partnerships, you know, you might reevaluate your partnerships, you know. And your investments, you know, so you could be concerned about unearned money, you know, you might want to go into stock market gains and all this, but you need to be careful, all right? The eighth house can give you money, but it can also take away all the money from you. So you need to be careful. So there could be potential turbulence in, you know, joint ventures or investments, very careful with this. And you might introspect a lot, you know, this is a good thing for cancer during this transit. So you might introspect and... Uh, you might try to understand, you know, the hidden aspects of life, what is going on in your life, you know, what is that which is making you weaker and weaker and weaker. And, you know, uh, what is that which is stopping you from going to the next level in becoming your best version? All right. So these are things which you will be very concerned with. And there could be some issues with your inheritance, you know, with your tax, taxes, you know, so make sure you feel file your income tax returns if you are above the limit uh, threshold and also uh, this is the time you might need to focus a bit on healing your emotional wounds all right because eighth house can show trauma and eighth house is graveyard where you feel like dying sometimes all right so therefore if there is some trauma if you and you have not healed from it so what will happen is you will bleed somebody else okay so it's like somebody else did something to you now you are punishing somebody else for things which they have not done so make sure you do proper financial planning uh, and especially regarding your joint assets and also heal your emotional wounds okay this is very important all the best cancer now we go to leo lagna so what is going on leo lagna very important planet saturn he's your kendra lord and also your dustana lord <laughs> right and also he's the enemy of your lagnesh which is the sun right so is a very tricky planet. Saturn is the most, I, I think for Leo, Saturn is the most tricky planet. It is the trickiest, right? So he lords your sixth house of disputes, divorce, separation, diseases, legal lawsuits and all this. And seventh house of partnerships uh, and, you know, collaborations, business uh, partners, your spouse. <laughs> and he's retrograde in the seventh house, all right? So you could reassess your partnerships and uh, relationships. So <clears throat> there could be a time where you are you know, re re solving some of your old conflicts or you are getting back with some uh, old person, right? So therefore, or it could happen that within your existing marriage, you know, some old issue comes up, you know, maybe you did some something somewhere and that surfaces now. Okay, so this is something you need to be aware and be careful of. <clears throat> And uh, if your dasha is bad, if your dasha is not the best, then there could be some setbacks, you know, in your partnerships or, you know, legal matters. Okay, so beware of uh, your business partners. If your dasha is not good, it might happen that some business partner might cheat, cheat you and, you know, take away your money and all this. But that is very rare in extreme cases, but it can happen. Or you might be tempted to do that. All right, so make sure you don't do it. If there is some problem, then try to separate amicably uh, without much poison, all right, without much hatred. If it doesn't work, then that's fine. You don't have to stay together for the rest of your life. It's not a marriage. But make sure that you uh, do your best and you do proper justice, okay? So there could be a strengthening of personal and professional relationships, you know, that, that this is one advantage or it could go the other way around, you know, your personal relationships become very professional and, you know, there is like, there is coldness in the relationship, okay? So, the best thing for you to do here is to be fair to yourself and to everybody. So, if you are fair and you take care of proper legalities and rules, regulations, restrictions, and even after that something goes wrong, 
then take it as a will of destiny and God and then move ahead. Okay. All the best, Leos. So now we go to Virgo. Virgo, Saturn, again, a very important planet. He's your fifth lord and he's your sixth lord, right? And he's retrograde in your sixth house. So for you, it is imperative that you take care of two things, your health and your hobbies and your passions, okay? So hobby, passion, your vision, motivation, all this comes under the fifth house and sixth house is your health and diseases. So maybe you know, there could be some disruptions also in your daily routine, uh, or you know in some creative activity that you are doing always you know so that that could be a situation uh, which could arise in your life so apart from this uh, you might want to have you know better um, better time management okay this is very important time management health management see virgo you are the original sixth house <laughs> right because virgo is sign number six and now Saturn is transiting retrograde in the sixth house, right? So it is like saying you are now you are now more of yourself, all right? So therefore, if you feel that uh, certain things are not happening as per your desire, then you need to work harder, all right? So there could be work-related stress and potential tension with your colleagues or with your children also at times, all right? So the most important thing for you Virgos is to improve your daily routine and your work habits all right habits will decide your destiny but for sure now it will decide <laughs> all right Virgos take care so now we go to Libra Lagna Libra ascendants what is going on Saturn like for Taurus he's your yoke card very important planet right he's your fourth lord of property home mother vehicles and also he's your uh, fifth lord right fifth lord shows your creativity you know your uh, interactions with children and all this okay so you might want to you know reconnect with your romantic uh, relationships or you know you might want to redo some education related work that you were doing you know uh, start studying something again or you might want to reconnect with your children or deepen your existing connection with your children or the mother okay so there could be some uh, creative uh, road some roadblocks in your creative life or even in your love life you know so there could be some tasks and you know there could be some temporary breakup or you know patch up some situation like that if your dasha is indicating sixth house otherwise the breakup will not happen don't worry uh, and also there could be uh, there could be a greater uh, this is like the positive side there could be a greater renewed sense of um, rediscovering yourself all right because the fifth lord is retrograde in its own house so very 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 important so if you are facing challenge as a parent then maybe you need to slow down a bit and you know see how you can improve your relationship with your uh, kids also and uh, try not to expect too much from three people your lover your children and your mother all right all the three try to keep your expectations reasonable Otherwise, you may get too frustrated, okay? So, for you, the best thing to do is to indulge in, you know, creativity and also do things which give, make you happy, you know, which uh, bring joy in you, basically, okay? Discover yourself and try to find what is that you want in life, all right? All the best, Libra. Now, we go to Scorpio. So, for Scorpio, what's going on? Saturn is your third lord. And he's your fourth lord. He rules your communications and your learning. And he's retrograde in which house? Guess what? The fourth house. Fourth house is a Kendra house, right? So very important transit for Scorpio also. So there could be opportunities, you know, you might uh, reassess your home, your family, you know, your mother, your vehicles. And, you know, there could be some relocations. You might go to some another country, you know, if required for some good reasons. Why? Because... The third house is also involved. Third house shows displacement because it is 12th from the fourth house of stability, right? So there could be a potential, you know, family disagreements or some problem with your home stay. You know, I won't say problems, but there could be, you know, some heated discussion, you know, if you have gone to your home after some time, you know, there could be some discussions and, you know, you might be figuring out, you know, what should you do, what should you not do, you know, right? So 
uh, this is important for you. So there could be some issues with your family property and, you know, family wealth and all this. So therefore, uh, the good thing is this will give you an opportunity to strengthen your existing family relationships with each other. So try to strengthen your bond, you know, especially with your mother and your family. Very important, Scorpios. And try to create harmony within the home. Okay, try if if somebody is unhappy with each other, uh, with one another, then try to make peace. All right. <laughs> and on the negative side, because of the third house, third lord being retrograde, there could be miscommunication and misjudgment. You know, you just name it; it's there. All right. So be careful before signing some document. Be careful before giving your word to somebody. All right. So therefore, there could be domestic stress, you know, struggle with property, real estate, family, and all this. All right. So take care, be the peacemaker, and I'm sure you will do very good. Scorpio. All right. All the best, Scorpio. Now we go to Sagittarius. Sagittarius, what's going on? Saturn is your second lord and your third lord. Not the most important planet for you, but he's Saturn after all, right? <laughs> he's retrograde in your third house. So therefore, you will get opportunities to revisit your communication strategies. You know, maybe if something is not working out in your life, something related to the second house, which is, you know, family or you know, your uh, net worth, basically. So it rules your over all the wealth that you have in this universe under your name. <laughs> and third house is communication. So maybe, you know, you might have to uh, check how, how are you communicating so it may happen that you know you increase your communication with your chartered account accountant then uh, you try to reconnect with your siblings and you know neighbors you know, this is also possible <clears throat> and also there could be some breakdowns in communication all right there could be some delay in your travels you might travel somewhere away from the family this is possible so for you the most important thing that you need to do is to be aware that who you are is important, but who you, who people think you are is also equally important. All right. So therefore, if you feel that people misunderstand you, if you feel you are not able to communicate properly, then take up some course in communication in, you know, uh, public speaking and all this. Try to learn, try to present properly. All right. Then what happens is you will be understood better. All right. So therefore, work on clear and concise communication be assertive uh, be direct uh, be straightforward but not hurtful all right very important because saturn in third can make you very blunt sometimes which can hurt people all right so therefore try to connect with your family your local people you know your local community and i'm sure you will improve your communication all right all the best sagittarius now we go to capricorn what's going on capricorn Saturn, the most important planet for you. <laughs> Why? Because he's your Lagnesh, and I'm sure you already know it. Lagnesh and your second lord. Retrograde in the second house, right? So you might have opportunities to reevaluate your personal finances, your values. I mean, you just name it and it's there. Your Lagnesh is retrograde. Every aspect, every damn area of life you will be thinking, not just one. You will you'll try to think what what's going on in my life? What am I doing in life? You know, is my life going the way I want or is it not going the way I want? Why is it not going? What can I do? How can I improve every area of life? So for you, it's not about any house. It's about every house. So this means you should work on improving every area of life, right? So therefore, if you, if you have issues with your health, take care of health and your family and finances primarily because the first and the second houses are involved. But since Lagnesh somewhat represents all the houses, so you could say you are focusing on every house, okay? And also very important for you to know is Saturn rules uh, these two houses which show your self-worth, okay? So therefore, if you have some kind of, you know, shame or guilt within inside, you know, try to let go of that, Okay. And try to budget uh, properly your wealth and your money. You might become a bit conscious about money, you know, where you are earning money, what's your net worth. You might try to shift your assets from, you know, one asset class to the other, like real estate, stock market, crypto and all this, you know. So therefore, 
focus on being the best version on or rather on becoming the best version and take care of your finances i am sure you will do very good all right so all the best capricorn now we go to aquarius so aquarius ascendant just like capricorn the most important planet is saturn for you why is your lagnesh again so your lagnesh is also your 12th lord critical planet rather and he's retrograde in your first house right so therefore you will have opportunities for self-reflection you know so first house is like literally your your head and 12th house is the back of your head <laughs> so so it's like you your head and the back of your head is trying to come to harmony with each other so what does this mean this means there could be things which you know which are pulling which which are trying to pull you down and you know that you need to give them up but you are not giving them up because of some reason right so therefore this is a time for self-reflection inner growth spiritual progress you know do your mantras properly do your spiritual practices properly and i am sure you will learn a lot about yourself so there could be if your dasha is bad, there could be some identity crisis, which means uh, you are thinking, who are you? What is going on in your life? What should you do? What should you not do? All these crazy things you are thinking. <laughs> All right. So don't worry. You might feel a bit stuck. You might feel, you know, your entire life has, you know, come to an halt. But it is very important that you try to understand why you are doing certain things and what what should you do to you know because 12th house shows your losses so loss not just financially but loss of any kind you know why are you losing relationships why are you losing your health why are you losing money all right so focus on self-improvement uh if required go to some secluded place you know take some spiritual tours that will also help you all right and understand your own true nature that is the best thing you can do aquarius so this is not a time for um aggrandizing things and you know trying to prove to everybody you don't have to prove to anybody the only person that you have to prove to is yourself so prove to everybody but also prove to yourself and if you can't do something then hands up in the air and surrender to god as krishna says in the gita right so therefore do your best, leave the rest and take care of your life, right? Thank you, Aquarius. And for Pisces, last but not the least always, uh, Pisces, Saturn is your 11th Lord and he's also your 12th Lord. He rules your gains and losses simultaneously. Very interesting planet. But he's retrograde in your 12th house, right? So you might have uh, opportunities for, you know, deep spiritual um, growth and healing and, you know, you might revisit your past traumas you know you might feel a bit isolated or you know your hidden enemies could cause issues you know there could be hospitalization or accidents or something like that and remember always 11th house is satsang community all right so satsang is like you know divine spiritual association so if you feel that you you have kind of lost your grip in life you know it happens sometimes right you are you have kind of lost yourself <laughs> so if if this is happening then try to withdraw try to go to some spiritual community you know stay there for seven days take a vacation and go there and take enlightenment you you will not become enlightened in seven days most likely not could be if god wishes but you will understand more about your nature right so therefore and at the same time make sure you are aware of your income and your expenses so now you might want to do proper budgeting because from 12th house saturn aspects your sixth house so you will want to see you know where you are losing money where money is coming from so there could be places there could be four scenarios money is coming not coming money is going not going so you have to take care of all the four scenarios check your income and check your expenses okay so hire a financial planner if required and heal yourself for you pisces this is the time to heal go to some spiritual community and heal yourself that is the best thing you can do forget everything else all right everything else will fall in place don't worry and take care all the best pisces thank you